So I did like three years of ceramics in school and uh, I would like to expand on how everybody talks about this being clay in the potter's hand, pottery wheel, illustrations. I think we, we glaze over, <laughs> we glaze over a lot of the process. And so they basically tell you, you get sifted and then you go through the fire and then you're done. And that is entirely not true. I have sifted my own clay from the yard and all that does is it gets out the obvious stuff. And that's just sifting you to make sure that you're a nice mixture of clay and sand. And then you're ready to be molded. But before you can even be fired, you have to dry out or you will explode. The little water, the moisture will collect in pockets and explode in the firing. And if you make it through the firing, the clay is so dry. Um, a lot of unglazed pottery, it's so dry that it has to be like watered constantly. Kind of like how the shield of faith has to be wet and wet to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. It is so dry that it's brittle. And I think a part of that is a wilderness where you get your heart of stone replaced for a heart of flesh. And then you are glazed. Whatever colors, they have iridescent glaze, they have metallics, they have all of it. 24 karat gold. You are glazed and put through the fire again after you've dried again. And that glazing is where you are armored up. Like there's just this layer of protection that allows this pottery to withstand the test of time. In archeology, span it is the glazed pottery that they're most likely gonna find and it's gonna be in prime condition over the unglazed pottery because it is brittle and doesn't last. 